brokers having to now pay GST. This is for interest income and basically it will be a tax on margin funding which in turn may increase transaction costs. Uh, so to explain this entire law better, let's bring on board Nitin Jain, the President and CEO of Global Asset and Wealth Management with Edelweiss Capital. Mr. Jain, good morning. Thanks so much for sparing uh, your time with us at this early hour. But I guess this is going to be um, a taxing time for brokers, for um, you know, h and I wealth managers like yourself, it's going to be a taxation on the interest income that is earned by um, you know guys like you. Uh, firstly, to just understand um, the broader picture, what, how much of a revenue comes in from this interest income on margin funding? First of all, good morning. <clears throat> just to clarify, I think that there is a slight uh, misinterpretation, if I'm not wrong, and I have to read the circular myself. Uh, see, what it is saying is that so there, are, there are two ways in which a client can take uh, money from for trading purposes, which is called as margin funding. One is he can go to a NBFC and take money and then take that money to the broker and trade with that money. The second, there is a product called as MTF or margin trading facility, uh, margin trading facility which is offered by some brokers, which is a SEBI-approved methodology to lend money to your own clients if you're a broker and you do not have, as a client, any other access to an NBFC. <clears throat> this, as a percentage, is actually a very small part of the borrowings in the market, vis-a-vis -vis the NBFC. Lead. So there are some brokers who don't have an NBFC would be using this facility and the second interpretation that I'm not very clear, whether it is on delayed charges or whether this is also on interest income by the uh, in the margin trading facility, because a lot of <clears throat> clients end up paying delayed, delayed payments, especially to smaller brokers. So that might actually get charged. That will definitely get charged on GST. But I'm not so sure about the interest that those brokers charge uh, these clients. Having said that, for us, this will be a very, very... Uh, small sum because most of our clients actually are borrowed through the NBFC route and not through the uh, broker channel because we uh, like, like I think would be the case for most of the larger brokers. Yeah, this is Ajay also joining in. Thank you very much for joining uh, so early and explaining that to us because there is a section of the market which was getting a little perturbed about uh, what exactly is happening and what kind of ta you know, tax lens has come on brokers. Uh, sir, what we understand from your point is that it's kind of just like GST is ensuring an organized sector moving towards organized and consumer space. Are you making a case that probably the similar trend could happen in broking as well and the costs for uh, you know, perhaps smaller brokerages uh, uh, will not be sufficing and hence there is a case that the business will consolidate towards larger brokers which have NBFCs of their own. Because if the income accrued will be treated as business income for them now versus earlier interest income, they will have to pass on the extra cost to their clients. So I think, as I said, I have to see the interpretation because I still believe uh, there are two <coughs> forms of interest income that even the <coughs> uh, small brokers charge. One is the delayed payment charges and one is the interest on the uh, authorized MTF facility. If there is GST on MTF facility as well, if that interpretation is correct, absolutely your point is valid. All the smaller brokers will struggle. Having said that, I think a lot of clients don't necessarily go to the NBFCs. Uh, for example, a lot of our clients might have borrowings from other NBFCs. And a lot of people who have borrowed from us in the NBFC might be dealing with other sub brokers or other brokers. So you can use some third-party NBFC to take facilities and deal with another broker. That is possible, but the big trend, the big mega trend is clear. The smaller brokers over a period of time are getting, or it's becoming more and more challenging for them to do business because the cost of compliance, cost of transactions, everything is going up. <laughs> you might so before we consolidation in the future. Right. So just one more question before we let you go. Uh, because we are talking about margin funding related uh, you know, subject, uh, what is your assessment right now as far as leverage in the system, especially from the broking uh, you know, side the, of the fence where you sit, 
the big HNIs, how levered are they? How much leverage is in there in the system in the market on uh, the back of uh, uh, you know uh, margin based positions? Has it gone down because of this uh, carnage which has happened in the mid cap, or there is still some uh, healthy positions there? So I think uh, when you look at the leverage in the market, I think margin trading is actually a very small percentage of the overall leverage. Why do I say that? Because a lot of market leverage is actually through derivatives market because in India is a very unique market where actually stock futures are very, very liquid. So uh, maybe it will be the margin trading would be only one-tenth of the total leverage that is there in the market. So it does not really make such a big difference on the overall market, except for certain stocks which don't have FNO. So you will see stock-specific action in stocks where there is leverage. Now, coming back to your question, yes, the leverage has gone down. It is a very volatile, uh, uh, these are volatile loans because these people are using for opportunistic trading purposes. So whenever the markets are doing well, you'll see them going up. In the minute markets correct by 5, 10, 15 percent, you will see the leverage coming down. So it goes up and down very quickly. So I don't know whether you can really find a big trend using this data point.